Hey, everyone. Welcome back and happy Tuesday. Okay, guys. So tonight is one of my favorite nights of the week because not only do we get the Vanderpump Rules new episode, but we also get the Valley. You know what's so funny? I'm just going to... I was dying laughing. There was some silly account that attached me as a groupie. Not a groupie, bitch. A groupie. Okay. As a Vanderpump Rules groupie, as if I haven't been around this cast for so long, as if I'm not friends with everybody, as if I don't have conversation. A groupie? Never been called one before, but okay, I'll be a group. Listen, I'll be a groupie. Okay. Anyways, we're back to talk about the fact that Brittany Cartwright is paying all of the bills and also DJ James Kennedy is um securing his dream job. So before we jump in, if you guys haven't already, go ahead, pop off in the comments section. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and let's jump right in. All right, guys, so we've been talking about Vanderpump Rules in the Valley for quite some time, but this one threw me for a loop. Now, especially being the fact that Brittany Cartwright with her $2 million, what was it? Uh, I think it was Jenny Craig. I believe it was Jenny Craig. It was the weight loss situation that Jax went on House of Villains and said that she was making $2 million for this whole saga, right? Well, now it looks like the $2 million went straight to the bank account. Now, we're going to break into all of it. Here we go. Thanks. Thank you to tasteofreality.com. They titled this, Brittany Cartwright Pays All the Bills and Shared Home with Jax Taylor. Now, the Valley star Brittany Cartwright opened up to Amanda Hirsch, host of the Not Skinny But Not Fat podcast, to detail her and Jax Taylor's living situation post-separation. In case you missed it, on February 29th, 2024, Brittany announced on her and Jax's podcast, When Reality Hits, that they were separating after four years of marriage. And reality TV fans questioned the validity of their separation when news broke, because it was just weeks prior to the season premiere of The Valley. Now, both Jax and Brittany maintained the separation was not a publicity stunt. The only reason I ever said anything publicly was because the Insta uh, Instagram investigators could tell I was lying and also staying in a different house. I feel like people should know my character. I would never do that. I would never put my son through this if it was not real. Now, Brittany moved out of their shared home on January 24th following a fight that happened on her birthday. I'll just keep spending a shit ton of money on Airbnbs until we figure out what we're going to do. Now, though Brittany has lived in an Airbnb since January, she still pays for all of the bills in the Valley Village home. I pay all the bills, all the stuff for school and cruise and insurance and car and all of that. Brittany and Jax purchased their home in May of 2019, where Brittany put down just as much money as Jax did when purchasing, yet she still pays for her Airbnb and the bills for their home while Jax is only responsible for their mortgage. Now, Amanda Hirsch asked Brittany the million-dollar question that everybody wants to know, will they reconcile? And she said, he wants me to move back into the house and live in the main bedroom and him live in the guest bedroom. And I'm like, we're not pulling a Tom and Ariana. I mean, saying that we're not pulling a Tom and Ariana, I love the shade, but I also agree with her. Like, fuck that. She doesn't want to be around him. She doesn't want to live in the same house with him. Why should she have to live in the same house with him? I'm fully all about this. I think that if she doesn't want to be a part of it, then don't be a part of it. Right? Or no? I don't know. All right. I'm going to play the clip for you guys. Here we go. Amanda Hirsch. All that work. When you invest almost 10 years in a relationship, forgive his cheating, have a baby together, and only to end up separating anyways? Mm. Well, check this video out of them fighting. You can see they're arguing. He picks up his kid. She looks like she's completely annoyed. Mm. Mm -mm. 
Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Okay. All right. So we're going to move on from that point and go over to DJ James Kennedy and celebrate the fact that this guy, was he calculated a little bit? Concise in his calculatedness. Yeah, I think we can say that. Did he follow the plan through? One million percent. When I met James Kennedy, DJ James Kennedy, all he wanted to do was be a famous DJ. When I first met him, it was at Sir. When I found out what the plan was, it was at Sheena's Christmas party when he told me that he was hooking up with Kristen and that he would be on the show the next season. He literally put himself into the right place at the right time, the right spot, and he made shit happen. I'm not mad at that. Now, can a lot of people look at this and be like, you used a woman and you used somebody to get what you want? Yes, they could. Will people do that? Yes, they will. But at the end of the day, the guy came in with a plan and he executed the plan. So much so where shit's getting real. DJ James Kennedy set to enjoy a headline slot at Coachella 2024. Now, James Kennedy has been ascending on Vanderpump Rules in recent seasons to the number one guy in the group. It may be by association, considering the other men on the cast can't help but make monumental mistakes, but it's earned regardless. James, in general, is one of the only people having a good run on Vanderpump Rules Season 11. He bought a house, reunited with his dog, and isn't caught in all of the Scandaball crossfire. James' season of success doesn't look to be slowing down anytime soon. He pursued a DJ career since joining Vanderpump Rules, and we as viewers have seen him perform everywhere from Vanderpump Dogs events and parking lots to closets at TomTom. His latest gig is undoubtedly a major step up from sitting on toilet paper or asking attendees to pick up their pooches. Mm. James is slated to headline at Coachella this year. Okay, not the actual festival headliner, but that goes to the likes of Lana Del Rey and Doja Cat. He's headline headlining the Neon Carnival event at Coachella, which is one of the biggest VIP events of the weekend. So James will headline the event alongside DJ P. We Anderson Pack. So there's no denying that it is a major gig for his career. Now, Neon Carnival is described as a mini Coachella with rides, brand setups, and beyond. But Ali Luber, otherwise known as the current love of James' life, spoke to The Sun about what the gig means for her man, saying he's been working on his set list. This is the most bucket list thing he's played. We're always manifesting and talking about dreams, and he's such a dreamer. Now, Ali probably saw James' major Coachella gig in his birth chart. They're so shady. But it is a huge accomplishment for him, especially coming from the See You Next Tuesday MC role. I want to say this. Absolutely 100% congratulations. I am all for people who manifest, who dream big, who execute. I think that we can do whatever we want in this world. And as long as you set your mind to it and you're like, this is my path and you take all of the steps you put in the hard work, then you can have whatever the fuck you want in this life. That is how I feel. That is what I believe. And that is how I maneuver. And to watch him do it, especially since I remember him as just busser, I'm like, man, you're absolutely fucking killing it. Good for you. But with that and the Brittany Cartwright coming out saying that she's paying all of Jax's bills and her own, I want to hear what your guys' thoughts are. So pop off in the comments section. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. And we'll see you next time. Love you guys.